Hello, everybody. It is Friday, April the 22nd. Welcome back. Thank you for uh, the new people that are joining us today, and thank you to all of our listeners on Rainbow Radio. This is our copyright disclaimer, and let's get started. The Ginger Prince has lost his reality. This man-child's delusions are playing out on a world stage. We're all just watching it, and so is the royal family, and they're choosing not to speak out against it for fear that I guess that it'll make things worse, but by them not speaking out, he is being allowed to give a a different image of what his role is in the family, but we'll get into that. First of all, let's start with some good news. Skippy V20 on Tumblr says, Barbie celebrates the longest ruling monarch in history, Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, whose extraordinary reign has seen her lead with an immeasurable devotion to duty and a life of service. Reaching 70 years of service, Queen Elizabeth II becomes the first British monarch to celebrate a platinum jubilee. This collective doll wears an elegant ivory gown of blue rabard adorned with decorations of order. A stunning crown and matching accessories complete her regal ensemble. And this is just a close-up of it. All right. Now, this is a commentator who I believe is in London, but uh, she is speaking for the Today Show, which is the show that Harry spoke with um, Hoda Cobb while he was still at the Invictus Games. So she's reporting back to today um, what's what the feeling is in London. And it says, Royal family hurt by Prince Harry's comments, say royal expert. Royal commentator Daisy McAndrew discusses the reaction to Prince Harry's comments during his interview with Hoda Cobb this week. She says the royal family was pretty hurt by some of his comments and more what he didn't say than what he did. So I'm going to go through um, kind of breakdown of what his uh, Today Show interview was about. And it starts with that he um, went to see the Queen and that he was ensuring the Queen is protected and has the right people around her. I don't know about you, but that sounds like, uh, to me, someone who is suffering from paranoia and someone who is worried about uh, staying on script for what he's been told is allowed to be said. And someone is chirping in his ear. Hoda, how do you feel being back, being with her, speaking about the queen and why she didn't say the queen, I don't know. Harry says being with her was great. It was just so nice to see her, you know. She's in great form. She's always got a great sense of humor with me. Well, I believe she has a great sense of humor with everyone, Harry. This is another thing. You think that um, she is going to allow you to be her confidant? You talked about uh, that she could say things with you that she can't say to anybody else. I don't think that's the case. And I'm sure she's not going to say anything of great importance to you for fear that it will get back out. The other thing you talked about was that you and Megan had tea with the Queen. <clears throat> Neil Sean came out yesterday and said on his YouTube channel that, in fact, Meghan was not seen or received by the Queen or Prince Charles. So he's saying that to save face for Meghan. It was like that we had reported that uh, from people who are in the know and that have palace sources who have said that she was put in another room with four footmen surrounding her, that um, Harry met with the Queen for about an hour, and then he met with Prince Charles for about 15 minutes. He arrived late, so Charles had to leave, go back, get ready for the service, and uh, because he was feeling in for his mother. I've learned over the years that certainly for myself, I find healing in helping others. Prince Harry opens up to Hoda about founding uh, the Invictus Games, his hopes for future and finding peace. Well, he kind of says he doesn't know if anybody finds peace, that there's probably peaceful days. But the other thing, he hasn't, um, he's, he's found the, um, the warriors, um, 
uh, games over in America, and he's went back and called it the Invictus game, and he's copied our games. And I just wonder with Harry not really contributing to the Invictus Foundation, if there's even going to be a future Invictus, because that's very expensive. We know that this year he has the help and backing of Netflix because he's doing the documentary for them about the games, but uh, I don't know if they'll be around next year, and who knows if he'll have the money, if the money is being used up on um, expensive production costs and uh, fees for them to come and uh, be uh, public figures. So then it goes on and says, in an exclusive interview, which he spoke on family life in the U.S., his recent visit and his grandmother, Queen Elizabeth, and the Invictus Games. We'll get into that about being in the U.S. Harry, um, in this interview, oh, sorry, I think that's a repeat. Uh, Prince Harry calls the U.S. his home now, and he said it really feels that way. Well, I feel like that's a dig at his um, family and the people of uh, the U.K., that he's talking about the U.S. as his home, when he always said um, England will always be his home and that um, he'll be part of the time in one place and part of the time in the other. So, if and he also said that the, um, the U.S. or Santa Barbara is his home for right now. He went on to say that they had welcomed him with open arms. I'm trying to figure out who it was that welcomed Harry. Was it uh, the person at working at the Christmas tree stand? Um, is it the um, the people who are paid to work for him? Because it was said that he was a difficult neighbor. And we know that um, Meghan and Harry were not invited to New York Met Gala, which is uh, the invites are done by Anna Wintour, um, who is editor-in-chief of um, Vogue in America and that they weren't um, invited to the Oscars. They went to the NAACP Awards, but they also sponsored an award and then donated money, and then the money went back uh, to the NAACP and, and then also went to one of their employees who's part of their Archwell Foundation. So how does that really work? Prince Harry on whether he's attended the Queen's Jubilee this year. I don't know yet. There's a lot of things, security issues and everything else. So this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make it possible that, you know, I can get my kids to meet her. Get your kids to meet your Her Majesty the Queen, not her. Use use um, the appropriate way when you're re, uh, words when you're referring to her. The other thing is, we know that he still is suing this, Her Majesty's government, and I think this is a way of getting back and saying, you know, I really want to come over, but my kids can't even meet their grandmother because of the fact that I don't have internationally protected person status, and I don't think that's going to be awarded, and I hope that the case isn't uh, doesn't even come up until after the Jubilee, and if that's the case, then he won't be able to attend, right, Harry? Because you'll be so afraid of of um, being attacked or booed by the people there. You're afraid that um, you'll have to be faced with people's real feelings about you and your wife. As a member of the British royal family, Prince Harry is synonymous with the United Kingdom, but he now thinks of the United States as home. He even said... Oh, that's going to be the splash. That's going to be the headlines. He knew that was a controversial statement, and it's a slap back in the face of his mother, his family, and the people from where he came. He knows exactly what he's doing, and he's baiting people with those words. And can't you just hear someone chirping in his ear saying, make sure you say this, make sure you say that? And she's letting him do all the speaking because I think he's in the narcissistic devaluation stage to where she's belittling him and he's hitting rock bottom and he's destroying his own life. But he has that codependency with her and thinks that this is the person who loves him. And shes I'm sure she tells him, whispers in his ear, I'm the person that you can trust the most. I'm the one that's here for you. We're in this together. So it's almost like he went back and mirrored that information to the queen. 
Harry met athletes competing in the Invictus Games and learned how competition is playing a part in their recovery after life in the military. Well, I'm glad she's even speaking to um, a young man who is a veteran who was uh, tragically um, paralyzed in an auto accident and how he's been able to compete in the games and she does a little sit down with him. Prince Harry on fatherhood. Hoda, what do you love about fatherhood? Harry says all of it, the chaos, the learnings, the reminder of just every element of yourself, your soul, right? You know, like he's trying to uh, see if she's in agreement with him. What does that mean? I can't understand anything that he says or that Megan says. The chaos, the learnings, well... This is all normal parenthood. This is what you do when you're raising children. But I don't understand how he relates it back to, you know, just every element of yourself, your soul. What does that have to do with your soul or yourself? I, I just, I don't understand. He doesn't seem to be able to open up too much about his children. So Prince Harry opens up about fatherhood, says Archie shares his cheeky personality. I always try and keep that. You know, the cheekiness is something that keeps you alive. No, he thinks that's what endeared people to him because he was the, the wild prince, the playboy prince, the one that always went out and did um, stupid things that had to be covered up by the palace and, you know, uh, try to make it um, not appear out in all the headlines. No, that is not a good thing to be the clown, the gesture, the joker, you know, and um, it, that's not a good thing. And I don't think that's who his two-year-old son is. It says he's peeling back the curtain of his little boy while speaking to Hoda. So he's trying to make the world a better place. That's his new mantra for his uh, kids. It's his responsibility he feels as a parent. Well, it's our responsibility as a parent to make sure that our children are um, receive proper health, proper education, proper guidance, uh, proper um, training as um, they go along and, and age throughout into adulthood, and then parenting's never over. But I, I don't quite get what he means, that he's got to make the world a better place for his kids, because he talks about equality all the time and how... He wants, when they grow up, the world to be um, equal to all. Well, I'm pretty sure that he's not getting equal, that he's getting above that as a privileged status, as a member of the royal family, as an ex-working member. So while you may still be related and be blood to them, I uh, don't believe that you were ever invited on the balcony. And I believe that this is all just put out there because I don't... they. The, the royal family knows that everybody would be in uh, up in arms and totally upset, and rightly so, if they were to appear on the balcony. And we know that it would be so Megan could get a picture of her children uh, standing with the queen, knowing this may be her last time appearing on the balcony or their last chance to get that. Uh, we've been told that behind the scenes that they still wanted the christening for uh, Lily, but that that was not going to happen, no way, shape, or form. So he just goes on talking about his responsibility that he feels as a parent. After almost 25 years, Harry still feels his mother pre mother's presence in his life, and he's making sure her presence lived on in his children. He talked about how they had pictures of her, and they go around saying, Grandma Diana, and this and that, and I understand you would do that as your child because you want them to feel like just because their um, their grandparent had passed on that they know something about them, but it's almost like he's channeling her. So he says that, um, again, where he's talking about Grandma Diana, and he says he feels his uh, mother's presence. It's constant. It has been for over the last two years, more so than ever before. So where do you think that's coming from? I think it's his wife saying, oh, your mother would be happy for us. She would be so thrilled that we're doing this and have kids. And uh, she doesn't need to be watching over William anymore because he has Kate and their family. So she's here with us. Don't you just feel us around her? That would be playing into his uh, paranoid delusions and her delusions as well. 
So it uh, just goes on. That's when she's sitting down with uh, her co-host and talking a little bit about the interview. But I think it's very sad and um, what he's done. And they basically, it was said that Prince Charles said, don't go talk about our meeting. Don't go talk about, um, it, you know, talking about us in the media. Well, he didn't. He avoided uh, Will and uh, his father. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And skipped right over them talking about he's missing his own family. So uh, to me, uh, who is also a YouTuber, and she used to make videos about him. And I guess she's starting to come back and do that, which is great. I've been watching her. Says her mother, who's uh, been dead, talking about Harry since 1997, helped William get set up with his own family and is now with him and helping him is just so bizarre. His wife wears her clothes and her perfume, so no wonder he thinks about her nonstop. It was said that the first time that she met Harry, she was wearing Princess Diana's favorite perfume. And I replied to the Today Show, Harry seems lost. He knows his grandmother is protected. And if he was concerned about her, then uh, why has she never met his daughter or seen her great-grandchildren in well over two years? Or Lily never, not even on Zoom. He seems like he is using the ch kids as a bargaining chip to be half in and half out. And it's sad. So Hoda and the Today Show did feature... Um, athletes and this is the I think we're getting ready for wheelchair basketball or volleyball and then there's the uh, swimming and this is after some athletes I think had just uh, completed their games or the competition so what do we have next and that a, a pretty picture of the bridge I'm making me some sort of in between things now so <clears throat> this was from the Teresa Longo fan page blog spot and this dates back to the 17th, but I think it's um, still giving us a little more insight to uh, what's went on. We've done a, a ton of digging overnight. Our sources say the meeting with Her Majesty the Queen was secondary to the meeting with Prince Charles. This is accurate. Prince Harry was then only given an audience with Her Majesty if he apologized and smoothed the waters during his time with her and listened to her concerns and directives. He was summoned or ordered to attend the UK, especially given the duo were due in the Netherlands together. Netflix did not accompany the pair in or around the meeting. Harry was ordered to keep his family matters private by not filming or recording, blah, blah, blah. Finally, it's certainly not the pair's initial idea to make a pit stop at Windsor. Uh, their team leaking meeting and alleging that it was Her Harry's olive branch speaks volumes about the pair and what they're trying to spin. They're trying to make it seem like it was this warm, cozy, pleasant visit when, um, and you'll find out in just a second, that this source comes back and says, we've just got to say a line for clarity. And this was the following day. Please note in the post, we're saying Prince Harry was summoned, ordered, but the correct term actually pertaining to the situation is an invitation. They just, you know, want to be, uh, be safe but that uh, she had asked for him to uh, come over. And I guess he made the plans and gave them last minute um, details of it. And that it was also said that on the day of the meeting that he was late. I guess Charles had to leave and go finish getting dressed for church because Harry and Meghan didn't show up when they were supposed to. But again, um, as Harry says, him and Meghan enjoyed having tea with the grandmother. Well, they had tea at the grandmother's home but Megan was not allowed in to see the queen. Uh, she was kept in another room surrounded by four footmen and she was given tea and nibbles. So going on to say in the recent visit that it was not a surprise visit, rather in order to attend, but not by Netflix, even though Netflix wants them to uh, clean up their image along with Spotify and, and start having a social media presence. It is likely expected that the duo be ordered to keep quiet about private conversations in the family. We'll see them, uh, the spin that they put on it and how much they're allowed to reveal. The son has it wrong, we can exclusively report. This was not Harry's olive branch. He's just making it seem that way. He's so just deranged, in my opinion, and his wife is... She's just controlling everything. 
She's the puppet master and he's the puppet. And she's saying all the things that he would want her to um, say because she wants him to be in that narcissistic devaluation stage to where she's the one that is speaking up, uh, or she has him. So when he says all these bad things about her family, that goes along with trying to clear up what people remember about her sit down with Oprah to say, no, 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 it's really happening because why would Harry say this about his own family? But the funny thing is you don't hear her come out and say anything about her family. It's all about Harry's because they have to keep spinning that narrative that they've been mistreated. I wouldn't be surprised if they pop up and say uh, the royal family apologized to them for everything that's happened. I also want to know if um, what one of the things that were said was about the bullying allegations because it was said that Megan wanted to know, but they said there was no need for her to know. So I'm sure that there were a few people that she wanted to attack and ended up being four or five people that were interviewed because some of the people who originally made the allegations just didn't want to go through it again. They had went through so much trauma and are still traumatized with it that um, they just don't want to be attacked. They just want to move on and, you know, let sleeping dogs lie. We don't have the details of the meeting subject matter, but our close inside sources are ready to inform us should anyone uncover more information from the inside. Should be noted the details of any meeting are highly confidential and it is not even being talked about among staff and courtiers. What we do know, given the total secrecy around the meeting and its topics, that it was a very serious meeting. Now again, it said that um, the Queen spoke to him and I guess tried to reason with him, calm him down to see where his head's at, but I'm sure she was able to see that he's just not well. And especially after the visit, going and saying all these things uh, and putting them in the media where all the headlines splash across the front page are about Harry going back. See, they don't want it to be said, um, oh, Harry didn't come to his grandfather's Thanksgiving service. He went over to see his grandmother, and Megan went with him. But where are the kids? They don't go with the kids. We haven't seen the kids. We don't even know for sure the kids exist. We think they do. We've seen pictures once or twice, but that's it. Where are they, and why keep them so hidden? A couple of the uh, headlines for the Daily Mail. My focus is on my own family. Prince Harry refuses to say if he misses his father, Prince Charles, and brother William, but reveals he feels, and he's talking about he, he um, was missing his children. So is it that he was told not to say anything? But then another article came out and said that he wanted a mediator so that he could begin to work things out with William. I don't know if that's going to happen because um, I don't feel like he went in and did any apologizing. He still thinks he's done nothing wrong and that he should be apologized to and his wife should be. So um, I, I don't think I see that mediator happening with him and his brother. Not until there's a lot of an apologies coming from Harry and Meghan. Harry's very California drawl. Language expert says Prince has adopted Americanisms and made his accents less posh to sound more American. Prince Harry is accused of playing up special relationship with the Queen amid warning crisis hit streaming site Netflix could demand. So it's probably that Netflix is wanting more uh, content from them as well as we know the publishers of the um, autobiography being written or Harry's memoirs. So we'll see what he puts in there, but um, he's not well. And I'm sure it must have broke Her Majesty's heart to have him sit down in front of her and have him say these things because whether he's shared the truth with her or not, I'm sure that there's things that she would know. She has MI5, MI6. She has people all around the world that would be able to keep tabs on him. And we feel like she hadn't removed those titles yet because she's worried about his mental health. And I understand that, but at some point, you've just got to be straight with him and doing it face to face, I hope was the perfect uh, opportunity and that she took advantage of that. Harry just cannot let go of his mother, and I think a lot of that stays dredged up again with Megan, that um, that she constantly talks about her, and you know, and uh, in front of Harry, you know, like, oh, your mother'd be so proud, be so happy, and uh, along those lines. But it's it's really just scary. And if you look at the arrow down, there's Harry and the grandmother 
uh, who was there to see to him. She got a huge smile on her face, and this was at his Sandhurst military graduation. Anonymous said, it's quite telling that Pinocchio wants to spend time with her husband's family as she has something to gain. We sure don't see Prince Harry supporting her reunion with her father. Nothing for her to gain, right? Prince Harry has been brainwashed and is now lost. It's obvious he's been attempting to undermine the royal family with his activist, um, a woke wife. The world can see the Yoko Ono of the royal family, and there's no... Um, compliment there. The monarchy is strong with DDOC and the uh, Sussex duo are still very in irrelevant. So I guess that would be um, the Duchess of uh, Cambridge. Anonymous also said, personally, I doubt uh, H and his wife would be invited to the Jubilee. It would really be a Markle circus. He knows he won't be going, so he tossed out the security bit. Security didn't stop him from his secret visit to see his grandmother, and I'm sure they had to say, look, nobody will know you're coming in, so there's no security risk. But he, I think he didn't want to come back because he didn't want to uh, jeopardize it because he still wants that IPP status. His wife is like, no, I want to be treated like royalty. Well, you're no longer royalty. You're ex-royals. So no invite was given and maybe advice things would be uh, changing for him status-wise once the Jubilee is over. Earl of Dumbarton has a nice ring to it. Can Dukedom be removed and left with Earl? So it was also uh, being said by Neil Sean that, um, and I, we had talked about this a while back, that I thought when Princess Eugenie went over to California for the Super Bowl and then uh, was seen going out for, to dinner with him, that she was trying to, um, you know, work up something behind the scenes or maybe, you know, was sent with a message from Her Majesty. But Neil Sean reported uh, on yesterday's video that it's now being said that Princess Eugenie did uh, allegedly tell them that they'd be welcome back with open arms, that they just need to come and visit her and that everything would be okay. And even Neil said, I don't think she judged the tone of what's going on. She's not, um, she's taken their side and not, uh, not seeing it like everyone else of all the damage that he's done. So, oh my God, ready. Teddy on Tumblr says, number 10 hits back at Harry's claims. He is making sure the queen is protected as his war with home office over funding his security rumbles on. He really is deluded and is very much Meghan's husband as the pair of them have a rich imagination and he has joined her in some weird messiah complex where they think they are saviors. You know, they're all about their virtue signaling and they want to seem so virtuous. And, you know, when um, I, I talked about uh, his son, a conversation he had with him having character, uh, and I thought he's the last person that we're going to think of as uh, being a person of uh, fine character. So it says the only protection the queen needs is protecting from him and his wife in the global soap opera that they keep insisting on making his family and British public endure. So then we had GBN that said, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry represent greater threat to royal family than any army of Republicans, people who would want to overturn the uh, monarchy. The couple has been criticized for distancing themselves from their family. Mr. Glover hits out at Harry's comments toward the Queen in his latest television interview, describing it as just simply preposterous. He continued in the Daily Mail comment, Generous souls may say that Prince Harry was simply expressing concern for her welfare, as she has not been in the best of health. No, he's paranoid, and it said he would. He his words were he wanted to make sure that the queen is being protected and that the people around her are uh, the right people. So does he have this uh, paranoia that uh, somebody's taken advantage of, or or somebody's you know, uh, keeping her indoors or, you know, locked up. I, I just don't know what he's insinuating. But the 12-word utterance, just making sure she's protected and she's got the right people around her, implies that those looking after her could be doing a better job. It is just a preposterous thing to say, and it's upset a lot of people. 
including, but not the least, his grandmother, his father, other members of the royal family, and then uh, extended people that um, care about him. He has also refused to be drawn on whether he's missed his brother, Prince William, and dad, Prince Charles. When Hoda brought that up, he changed the subject and said that, uh, yeah, he missed his family and he was ready to get back home to California to see them. So he glossed right over this. <coughs> Excuse me. Get something to drink. Thank you. Instead, he turned the question on its head and spoke out about how he misses his family and was fully committed to making sure Invictus Games competitors had an experience of a lifetime. How will the Invictus Games go on? <clears throat> Will they be over? Will there be enough money for there to be future Invictus games? It's hard to know, but I think Harry has really lost his way. It's just so sad at, at what we're seeing. It's just sad that, um, that on the Queen's 96th birthday and celebrating 70 years of service, that she would have to share the front pages and the headlines with Prince Harry's visit and all of his virtue signaling nonsense. I don't know why he wants us to look up to them and them be seen as, as these um, world do-gooders that, um, that without them, what would we, gosh, what would we all do? How would we get along? Because that's not who they are. They like to talk about it and because that's part of the woke culture, but it's, it's more about your actions than saying that you're doing these things. So my note to you guys, I hope you agree and understand why I only wanted to publish the video celebrating Her Majesty's 96th birthday and her 70 years on the service yesterday. Um, I, it should have been her special day, but we now see her ex-royal grandson splashed across the covers and in the headlines, which in my opinion is a slap in the face to the Queen and her family. He is so disgraceful, and he continues to ride off their coattails. So he, needs, he and Meghan need this connection. They want that connection. They want to make it look like they're half in and half out. They want to make it look like um, Harry's this uh, protector of um, Her Majesty and that, um, you know, he has to go back and sit down for one hour and make sure everything's taken care of. He doesn't have any control. He doesn't have any authority to speak out. He doesn't, uh, he's no longer a working member of the royal family, and he's just trying to interject himself into the headlines. So, it says, um, he is so disgraceful, continues to write off their coattails. Also, Neil Sean uh, confirmed the wife was not allowed to join the Queen or Charles for their meeting in the uh, with the Ginger Prince, that she was asked to be in that uh, a different outer room and that they had no intention on seeing her whatsoever. So I guess uh, if Jeannie was involved, yeah, she definitely read the room wrong and it, it wasn't that everything was going to come back and be hunky-dory and that apologies need to be, in, be made, but now they've even made it worse. Um, then there were rumors today that, um, and even Lady C said, that the royal family on uh, her April 21st video, that people in the royal family don't want to speak out about this. Uh, because they feel like it'll just make bigger headlines and create more drama, and they don't want to start that to where you need to, every time they say something, uh, the royal family has to um, make a statement. I understand that, but we need to know. Um, with the Privy, Privy Council meeting her the day before, um, was it to do with him being removed as counselors? of state? Was it to do with him being removed of his uh, uh, royal titles that he was gifted? So um, I'm, I'm very curious to see, and maybe she had always said um, that if, and, and other people around her had said that if she were going to do something like that because she was worried about Harry's mental health, that she would do it face to face after she had had a chance to talk to him because she didn't want to do anything that would push him over the edge or that would be seen as 
causing um, uh, mental distress to um, his mental health. I, I don't think anybody could do worse by them. And I'm sure it's, it's all, of, again, about the optics and what people are going to think. But I, I feel like at some point they need to say something. They need to set the record straight. They need to tell the truth and call out the lies that Harry's saying because he's trying to influence people in America going on these stations to think that he and his wife are these um, global superheroes and that they're doing all these wonderful things. The problem is, is that they take advantage of these different things and use them just so that they can have their own personal content and be in the limelight and but just prior to going over to the Invictus Games. So I'm wondering if uh, Harry is going to get a earful from his wife when he goes home. Is she going to congratulate him and say that he got the right points across or that he forgot to say something or maybe said something that he wasn't supposed to? So. Who knows what it is, but he is in the devaluation stage of being with a narcissist, and it's sad, and he thinks that she won't leave him, but she could leave him at a drop of a pen when she wants to. The statement she made over in Invictus where she said, I couldn't love my husband more or be more proud of him. Well, I think it's she doesn't love him at all, and when she says that, it's like, no, I can't love him anymore. She's kind of speaking her own truth a little bit there because that was a strange statement to say. You could just say, I love my husband and I'm proud of him, you know, but of course you're going to be proud of each other because you live in this little bubble that you've created with your little family unit and um, doing the things that you want to do, not having to follow rules and restrictions and and uh, to be a part of the royal family anymore. That you need people to like you. You need to because you're merching and that you know that if this Netflix and Spotify deal dries up or is not successful, that that could prevent you from, uh, you know, gaining any uh, future deals in, you know, and over the next year or so. And I just think that so much damage has been done. But I want to assure you that even though a lot of people in the U.S. don't follow her, people think that um, that she has everybody fooled over here. I can tell you, even people that aren't followers, I know because I've talked to many of them, still are aware of how they come off, still can see right through them. They're not fooled by them whatsoever. And if they were really welcome with open arms, or if you think they're fooling them, then why have they not been invited uh, to do all these things that we know they wanted to be invited to and even said that they had been invited? They're not. They're living in their own little bubble, their own little world. And she is just feeding him and feeding him. And Harry is just, yes, 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 I'll go along with it, dear. Yes, yes. Now, I'm not saying that um, only she's to blame. He's to blame, too, because he is saying these things. And he's going along with his wife. But I'm telling you, he's in a really dark place. But he, he needs true help. He just He's not getting the right help. A life coach is someone who helps you get your routine, who helps you be more successful, helps you obtain your goals, but it doesn't help with past traumas, PTSD, um, with uh, growing up feeling like you were unloved or um, that you feel like that somebody had had a plot to hurt your mother or to hurt your wife or, or children. It's just a total... Um, paranoia and it's it's really scary to see I, I think the guy's really mentally ill that's just in my opinions uh, but I I just think something really is wrong with him and I think his family sees it but what do you do with the 38 year old man who is married and uh, living a, a, you know all the way across the ocean in the United States on the opposite end and what do you do how do you help him you know I, I just don't know what you do but you've got to do something and say, we're going to shut you down. We're going to take you away from this. We're going to for sure move you, remove you from council or state. And I think he was told that face to face and maybe even about his titles. And I think he was told not to use them. And then when they got to Invictus, uh, supposedly they wanted to go by just Harry and Meghan and not the Duke and Duchess. 
but I think that that came from his family. I think there's a lot of things because it's been reported that uh, Charles was at the end of his tether. He's just, he's done. He doesn't know what else to do about him. Um, I think that we're, that they must be truly frustrated and they're in a bad situation. But I do think they need to speak out or at least correct the papers and say, um, we, we're going to put out a statement about this article and about what Harry said. We need to correct the narrative because when you don't correct it, what happens is there are going to be some people that are going to believe them because they're just seeing this polished up uh, interview where he looks like he's being the humanitarian of the world. And, and uh, while I'm not saying he's not doing great things, he's certainly not, um, you know, bringing about world peace. But it's just scary. So we'll continue to keep you updated. And uh, again, thanks for understanding about me not putting out the video yesterday. But um, we're back to it today. And uh, I hope everybody had a, um, a really great uh, day yesterday and uh, sending their well wishes to um, Her Majesty. And it's, it's just an amazing accomplishment what she's been able to achieve in this lifetime. And uh, we continue to pray for her and hope that she continues to uh, reign for many more years to come. So if you haven't hit that uh, thumbs up button, if you haven't uh, subscribed or left a comment, now's your time to go ahead and leave and do so. And I want to wish you all love, peace, and happiness. And I'll see you in the next one. Sorry about the dog there.